In 2019, the GLC received a refresh, featuring new styling, new interior technologies, and a brand new selection of engines. But we haven't stopped improving it since then. Now joining the field is the GLC 300 DE plug-in hybrid. Plug-in hybrids combine the best of both worlds, with an ultra-high efficient engine when you need it, and a high voltage, high capacity battery for when you don't. The zero emissions driving range of this model is up to 26 miles, and according to research done by Mercedes-Benz, over 90% of all journeys done are less than 31 miles. There's actually a good chance that this car may be able to do most of your driving without burning a single drop of fuel. So let's dive in, take a look, and see what it's all about. Now the combined power output of both the engine and the electric motor working together is 306 horsepower and a mighty 700 newton meters of torque. The performance looks pretty good on paper, but we'll get to that bit later. The styling has been brought right up to date and at the front of the AMG line there's a new single piece A-wing grille which I do quite like. Not much has changed on the sides but that's not such a bad thing, it's got a really pretty profile. There's only subtle hints as to what's going on under the skin like the EQ power badging on the sides and the socket flap at the rear, this is where you charge the car. Highlights for me have to be the new split two-piece LED lights on the front and the four-piece LED lights on the rear, now an SUV design staple in the Mercedes-Benz range. The boot is open just by pressing a button on the key and this shows off the large, deep and wide load bay that we're used to in the GLC. There's enough room for the largest weekend bag I've ever seen in my life and some fishing gear in here too. The boot floor itself has had to be raised in order to accommodate the high voltage battery but I think this is a small price to pay for having that zero emissions driving range. And if you need to triple your boot space just tap the two buttons on the outside of the load bay and the seats will fold down like so. And of course, the boot can be closed again at just the press of a button. The interior has received an update too with new trim pieces, new design details like the vents and of course the introduction of MBUX. The seats are still as comfortable and supportive as ever and there's plenty of room for your rear passengers to stretch out and enjoy the ride. And there's twin Isofix anchor points on the outer seats too. With the new MBUX system, you gain increased connectivity and you can have up to seven different user profiles set on the system. So if the car is shared, then everyone can have their own personalized setup. Now, if you've used Mercedes-Benz infotainment systems before like Command, then getting on with MBUX will be no problem at all. The basics of how to operate it are exactly the same. Now, if you'd like a bit of a more in-depth guide on MBUX, then take a look at the video which is on screen now. But in essence, the way it's controlled is by touch on the touch screen itself. With the twin trackpads on either side, the one on the right lets you edit what you see on the instrument cluster. And of course, with the touch sensitive trackpad down in the center, and you get a haptic feedback so that you know that your input has been registered. It's not all touch though, there are still the same physical shortcut buttons that you'll be used to, so you can use muscle memory to get around the system. Now in terms of storage spaces, they are everywhere. There's really deep door pockets, plenty of cup holders, a wireless charging pad down here on the premium model, and within the clamshell center console, there is more than enough room actually to store a hat. Let's talk about charging. To fully charge the car's 13.5 kilowatt hour battery off a three pin plug will take five hours, or if you're using a wall box like we've got here, then the job is done in 90 minutes. So why do we need to plug this hybrid in? Well, that comes down to the battery size. The battery being 13.5 kilowatt hours in capacity is almost 27 times larger than what you would find in a non-plug-in hybrid. And this additional capacity is what allows you to have that higher driving range without burning a single drop of fuel. Naturally, the car does recover energy as you're driving along through regeneration or regen as you'll hear it being called a lot, but it is much more efficient to plug the car into an external power source rather than just recharging it off the engine itself. Now, by our calculations, if your energy cost is, let's say, 16.5 pence per kilowatt hour, then a full charge for this car will cost just two pounds and 31 pence. Now, I've seen newspapers that cost more than two pounds 31. So for 26 miles of driving, I think that's quite good value for money. Even once your journey's finished, you can still keep an eye on your GLC at all times thanks to Mercedes Me Connect. There are some brilliant features on here like being able to remotely lock and unlock the doors, even open and close the windows all from your smartphone as well. You can also keep an eye on all of the service information and if the car needs any attention, it will let you know through the app. There are some hybrid specific functions for the GLC 300DE through Mercedes Me Connect as well, like being able to keep an eye on how the battery is doing and setting pre-entry climate control. 
Doing this will make sure that the cabin is just right for when you next hop in. You can also navigate to destinations and charging stations through the app as well. Simply select where you'd like to go, hit send to car and the app will generate a route and send that to the car ready for you to start navigating as soon as you get in. But now I think it's time to get the GLC 300DE out on the road. Now when you hop in and start the car you'll be greeted by the sound of nothing. EQ power plug-in hybrids will always start using the battery power and once you get it out on the road you'll find that it drives a lot like a GLC but there are a few differences. Let's take you through them. So the first thing that I think you'll notice other than the completely silent start, we'll get to that uh, in a moment, is that the steering has got a little bit lighter uh, to my senses. That's not a bad thing at all. It makes low speed manoeuvring very easy, even going around this exceptionally large uh, roundabout in Stevenage. I could probably do it just by using my thumb. The other thing is the GLC 300DE gets air suspension all round, so it's taken an already incredibly comfortable car. The GLC has this great property of just being able to float over um, any road surface that you can throw at it, but now it's got even better with air suspension. It's, it's, it's almost on GLE or GLS uh, levels of ride comfort in here. The GLC is a model that I've spent a lot of time with and it's a really comfortable, relaxing and enjoyable thing to drive. There's great all-weather usability and fantastic traction from Formatic all-wheel drive. There's a few different drive modes that you can take advantage of in the hybrid, so let's get into them. You'll start off in comfort, that is the car's hybrid setting, so it will use electric power as much as it can, but if and when you need it, it's ready to fire up the combustion engine for an extra power boost. Moving down, you have got battery level, which prioritizes keeping the battery topped up. So if you're on a long motorway drive, then you can use that to get high efficiency from the diesel engine, but have maximum electric power available for when you get into the city. Moving down from battery level is eco mode. That is all about maximizing both the fuel efficiency and the energy efficiency of the car. Perhaps the most important drive setting on this model is the electric mode. Now this converts the GLC to be able to run as a zero local emissions car for up to 26 miles in the coupe and up to 27 miles in the SUV that we have here. Within this mode, you can alter the amount of regeneration that you would like to do using the gear shift paddles, going from D plus, D, D minus and D minus minus, with D minus minus being the most amount of regen and allowing for one pedal driving when around town. The electric drive mode for me is the ideal one for if you're doing lots of short journeys or spending most of your time in town. But the standout one for me has to be the one which I'm using now and that is D Auto. So the car uses all of its sensors, all of its radars and it uses the terrain map like a low altitude strike bomber to figure out what sort of road you're on and optimize the regeneration. Now this is a feature that I first discovered on the EQC and I like it most because it's the most sort of natural uh, feeling drive setting. So whenever I'm in it, pop it in D Auto. Now this car has got a brain for how to be a good GLC but it's also got some of the magic that goes into the EQC in it and that is some very very high praise indeed from me. And if you need a bit more schnell on your drive, then just flick the dynamic select switch the other way. Now, last but not least of the preset driving modes is Sport. Now, this turns the hybrid system into a booster. I said earlier that it looks quite impressive on paper, but on the road, it looks like this. And that is seriously impressive. 700 newton meters of torque instantly, readily available. It feels like just such a surge pushing you forward. It's delivered smoothly, it, it's, not, it's not like being hit on the side of the head with a mallet or anything. Putting the car into sport mode sharpens up the steering as well and allows you to enjoy all of the capability that this chassis has to offer. It is an enjoyable thing to hustle through some corners on some more interesting roads. Now yes there are a lot of drive settings to go through but you will very quickly find out which one works best for you depending on how you drive. If you want to combine the rugged flexibility of an SUV with the dynamic design and drive of a coupe, then look no further than the GLC Coupe. The 300DE is also available in this model and it's one that I can't wait to try out. 
all GLC 300 DEs coming to the UK are going to be AMG line. Choosing the equipment level has been made easy. There are no standalone options anymore. These are all worked into the packages. So all you need to do is select the color, select the body style, and choose between AMG line, premium, or premium plus. Like all plug-in hybrids, the GLC 300 DE combines the best of both worlds. With the ultra-high efficiency engine and the battery working together to deliver excellent on-road performance and real-world flexibility. Now, a lot of SUVs spend most of their time in fields. Actually, no, they spend a lot of their time in cities. Now, when you are doing those short stop-start, high-density traffic journeys where a combustion engine naturally is a little bit less efficient, then it makes sense to me, at least, to use electricity to do those trips. For me, with the facelift, the GLC not only became better looking, but also more intelligent thanks to the addition of the 300DE. If you'd like to find out more about this model, get your hands on it yourself, arrange a test drive or build your perfect one, then get in touch with us here at Mercedes-Benz Hertfordshire. To find out more about the range, then take a look at the videos which will be appearing on screen now. If you like what we're doing and would like to stay up to date, then make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss a thing.